hi fellow enthusiasts welcome to my channel let's go into today's video and we're gonna come back at the end to wrap it up you would have remembered this video from last week when we demoed um, an FM transceiver hi fellow enthusiasts welcome to my channel let's go into today's video and here we show the receiver here we will show the trans transmitter in action I think it's around here here so here was functioning as a transmitter we use this radio see hard on to demonstrate that as a transmitter then in this section we functioned as a receiver um, here we mentioned that um, about a meter of wire we serve but we um, there was a mistake here because it was supposed to be the just telling you that there's an antenna used here then the next line would be about a meter of wire would serve the actual value is around 0 0.85 uh, meters uh, 0, 0 0.85 meter which is like uh, uh, 85 centimeters in there about so um, there is um, so that was it then so what we want to show you today quickly is how to make this um, so the circuit diagram is shown here in the last week's episode we used a different a different uh, speaker here um, which is what I can show you right now in my hand this speaker here that's what we used last week uh, to demo it, this. And because of that, we had to build a preamplifier. This um, this thing right here, this transistor here, is a preamplifier that we used to boost the signal going into that amplifier because we were noticing a, an imp impedance mismatch and uh, the signal was so low coming out from the speaker. So we built this preamplifier to help us with last week. But this week, we decided to use this um, here. Uh, it's an it's a LM386 amplifier. So that's what we're using for this week. So I'll just show you this quickly. So the speaker, the speaker is right here. This tiny speaker, by 0.5 watt speaker. And today we're using this uh, this metal can here to provide like like a ground shielding or something like that. But anyways, let's go quickly and show you what we we did today. So we added this amplifier we built in a different uh, episode. And then again, you don't need this preamplifier here, but if you want, you can use it. And the main thing we want to show today is many times when we, when we build uh, FM receivers or transmitters people ask us what's the value of this inductor and capacitor and I can show you the value right we can just copy this and use it but let me show you how to do it for, by yourself you don't need people to tell you the values or even if they tell you the values and you don't have it and you still want to build the circuit like when I see something I like I want to build it right away I don't want to waste time you know trying to order parts unless I can't do it but if I can, I don't need to wait to, to order the parts. So here, this uh, this is a spreadsheet that we created that we can use to calculate quickly what parts that we need. If you have an inductor and you need to calculate the capacitor, you plug in the value of your inductor, it will tell you the value of your capacitor as long as you give it a range of the starting frequency and the ending frequency. If you have inductor, it will give you capacitance. If you have capacitance, it will give you inductance. So let me show you how it works. So right here, I am giving you the value of my capacitance, and I want you to calculate my inductance. So we'll just pick that and you apply this formula and give me a value of inductance that I need to get to be able to, with this capacitor, cover this range. Likewise, if you want to go the other way too, um, so here... Let's go to let's find inductance. Let's find inductance. 
Alright, so I'm here I'm finding capacitance. So I'm giving it the value of an inductor and it's finding me the value of the capacitor. So this is the capacitor I need for this inductor to cover this range. In this case, this is the value of inductor I need for this capacitor to cover that range. So don't worry about this. Let me show you the formula. It's so easy. You can just plug it in and use it. So the formula here is F is two is one over two pi square root of L C. So if I know L, I can calculate C. If I know C, I can calculate L. So when someone tells you that they are using seven tons or three tons or eight tons, what does it really mean to you? It doesn't matter to you. What matters is the inductance. And what mat matters is the capacitance. So if they said use four tons of wire, you might be wondering what exactly what do does that mean? The, the system doesn't ca count and say, okay, do you have four, four tons or ten tons? The system only knows the inductance and capacitance, and that's what it uses to find your frequency. And again, here, you know your range in North America is 88 to, to 108. In North America and some parts of, of, uh, of the world, like Africa, let me change this to 108, 108. All right. So in this sense, so I'm giving it a fixed value um, inductance. And I want it to calculate for me the capacitance. So it's telling me that I need 18 to 27. 18 to 27 picofarads. 18 to 27 picofarads will give me this range if my inductance is um, 0.11 uh, microhenry. If I have 0.11 microhenry, then I need 18 to 27 picofarads capacitor to cover the range of frequency of interest to me. Right, so if I do the same here, if I give it a value of, of, of capacitance, um, I think I've done something wrong. If I give it a value of capacitance, it is able to calculate for me and tell me you need an inductance within this range. So if you go to, through your two kits and you find that this is the capacitor you have, doesn't matter, just find whatever value you have, plug it in here. And then when you plug in the value of a capacitor, in this case, three picofarads, it will tell you that you need an inductance of about 1 microhenry to 0 0.7 microhenry to 1 microhenry, 1.1 microhenry. That's what you need. So what if I have, if I have 3 picofarads here, if I have 30 picofarads, sorry, sorry, if I have 30 picofarads, so I'm just going to change all this to 30 picofarads. If I have 30 picofarads, it's, it's, it's telling me, this is the value of inductance you need. Is I need from seventy-two uh, nano Henry to um, two point one micro Henry. That's what I need. But in this case, I'll be varying my inductance and not my capacitance, but that's not what you need. You want to be able to vary your capacitance because it's easier to play with the capacitance than inductance. So here, you're just going to fix the value of inductance and then find your capacitance. Or if I have a capacitor that is 20 picofarads, I know the range of my, my, my capacitance or 30 picofarads or 40 or 60 or 70, whatever, you plug in the value here and calculate your inductance, and then you make the inductor. So let's make an inductor. Before we do that, I'll show you a picture that we're going to use to make our inductor. And there's a picture right here. As you can see, I'm showing you an inductor here, and the diameter of the inductor starts from the center of one wire to the center of the other wire, including the gap between them. That's the D. Then the L is the length of the magnetic magnetic circuit from the beginning of the coil to the end of the coil, coil that is your L so you know the number of turns or you make it and you count it the diameter as we've demonstrated here the length also the magnetic circuit, circuit length and then capital L is the inductance in microhenry and then the units the diameter and length are all in inches when you when they are in, in inches your your inductance will be in microhenry so this is the formula you need. Inductance is equal to d squared no, times number of tons divided by 18d plus 40l. 
So plug the values in and you get an approximate value of your inductance. Remember your small L, you can always adjust. You can make it wider or, or narrower, longer or shorter, sorry. You can make it longer or shorter too, and it will influence your inductance. And it's only at the denominator. That means the, the longer it is, the shorter your inductance, the, short, the, the smaller your inductance. The shorter it is, the longer your inductance because they have an inverse relationship. If you if you ignore every other function, every other part of this, um, you can see that the relationship between L and L is an inverse relationship. Okay, so if, we, if we're going to ignore every other thing in this equation, right? So the relationship is an inverse one. So as your small L increases, your capital L decreases. As your small L decreases, your capital L increases so they have that inverse relationship where you can say that the constants of proportionality is then the other things that are in that equation which are namely this right okay so that's how you calculate your inductance so once you know your inductance then there's nothing else really left for you to do you know your inductance you plug it in into this system yeah i can give you the, the, the um, the formulas uh, but again it, it's a, a reverse calculation it is an a reverse calculation you know that f is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of lc uh, i have written it down already so let me find it or oh, just write a new one okay right there f is 1 over 2 pi square root of lc so you know your frequency you calculate for the lower one and you calculate for the higher frequency you can rearrange this formula to find L, right? So because F 2 pi F is equal to 1 over square root of LC. And then um, you want to find LC. So 2 pi F squared is equal to 1 over LC. Then 1 over 2 pi f squared the square is outside is equal to lc so in this case c will be equal to um so you're going to divide both sides by l so l is here and then you divide so c is equal to Is equal to 1 over 2 pi f squared then L is outside and then the same will go for C uh, L will be equal to 1 over 2 pi f all squared then C it's outside it right so when you do that you can find the value of your L and your value of your C that's how you do this. Then you plug into an Excel sheet. So when you know the L and you already know your F, you can do that. To, you have to do this twice. One for the low frequency, one for the higher frequency. Right? So you're going to do that for the minimum. And then again, you have to do it for your maximum. For your maximum frequency. So you can cover the entire range. So you do it twice for F minimum, F min, and F max. So when you do that, you find the value of of your L. So I'll go back to that. Uh, so here. So when you do that, you find your your F mean, which is 88 megahertz, and F max, which is 108 megahertz, right? So depending on your region, if you're in a region where your minimum fre frequency is 76 or 65, whatever. So you just have to plug it in. So if you're 65, plug in 65 here. Then it will tell you what capacitance you need. Because you are giving it the value of inductance. So based on that, it's finding your capacitance. Apply that formula we did. Right? 1 over um, 2 pi and all that multiplied by that. So this is the, the formula that we just employed. Right? So for this, we are giving it the frequency and it is finding us the capacitance 
so let's just go back because we're not using from 88 so do that and then let's make an inductor let's make an inductor to showcase what we're talking about here so here my inductor is going to be a wire that i just wind around a solid material uh, of a specific diameter so for me to do that i'm going to have a wire a piece of wire like this one i have in my hand right now and then i just take a piece of material where i'm going to wind it on so sometimes you hear people tell you wind it on a pencil wind it on on a drill bit because they already know the size and they're trying to make it easier for you but what i'm trying to show you is the theory behind it so you know the size that you're going to be using so right here i'm going to take this my uh, digital caliper here and i'm just going to measure this this is 6.2 millimeters i'm going to find another one and this one here just always make sure it's a zero this one is um 4.71 millimeters and then i have another one here 4.36 and then another one 3.90 so you can pick any one you want um, if you have five millimeters you can also grab that one i had it uh, earlier i just dropped it off um, so 4.69 so let's use that one then you just take a piece of wire and you start to make winding right so we we need to know rd and um, this is going to be rough so i'm just going to make one turn just one turn or two turns in this case actually two turns and then i measure the diameter Six point two five. So this is in millimeters. So let's change it to inches. I'll just change this measurement to inches. Um, remember, the unit has to be in inches. Um, so if I just go here, zero point two four one, zero point two four one. That's my my the the diameter. So I can go back here. Um, so the values has to be in inches. Or the unit in inches and then the value of my inductance will be micro henry so in that case now i'm gonna go ahead and bring up this formula here so i have it's okay I've created the formula here and uh, it's just to make it easier for us this I plugged it into the Excel sheet and um, once I put in my value of D N and L D N and L I'll get my capital L so that's all we're gonna show here so my D um, is diameter we measured as 0 0.249 is that correct 0 0.249 so we're going to put it here 0 0.249 and then uh, we don't really know the, the length we're going to make yet and we don't know the, the number of turns but we want to get the value of inductance which is where the formula is so once we put in these values it will tell us the inductance so let's let's make it uh, normally they say make five tons, six tons, you know, four tons, whatever. We don't know, but um, let's try and uh, make some tons and measure it. So so far, we've made just two tons. We made two tons. So let's measure the the length of the two tons we made. Um, that's the the L. Is 0.055. 0.055. All right 0 0.055 is our length so we're going to plug it in 0 0.055 and then the number of turns obviously we made two turns so you're going to make two here so that's the inductance is giving us but this inductance um, is not enough right so we don't really uh, we, we are looking for something about one, 0 0.1 so we need to increase some things here. The diameters we will never change. It's fixed. But we can change the number of turns and the length of magnetic circuit. So for us to do that, we just go back and add more turns. So I'm going to put it back in the former. 
let's just continue so three and four and five so we're gonna check this one and see take it off the former and then just measure the length again that's five times right so the length now is 0 0.149 0 0.149 or 1495 yeah 0 0.15 let's call it 0 0.15 so the length now is 0 0.15 and we have five tons length 0 0.15 2.15 and we have five tons of wire now so our inductance is about 0.147 um, that's exactly 1.148 uh, that's exactly where we want to be so we've used this diameter of, of uh, 3 bit we've used this diameter um, 0.188 or there but we've used this and um, made our inductor and we made five tons and we measured the length of the magnetic of this magnetic circuit and calculated the inductance so that's the inductance so if you take this value of inductance I'm just gonna copy it and um, I have my inductance but I want to calculate my capacitance so there's my inductance I'm just gonna plug it in there uh, phase values only plug it in there phase values only and then it will calculate for me automatically what capacitance I need so this is the value of capacitor I need for that value of inductor but wait a minute that inductor is the value of that inductance is in micro Henry. Remember that. So we have to uh, really take care of that here. So it is E micro Henry is uh, minus six. E minus six. We must take care of that. We must make sure that we include that E minus six. So so at the end of it E minus six. So that's um, exponent. That's ten raised to the power minus six. So that tells us that this is the value of capacitance we need. In this case, we need about 22. Um, here is 14 to 22, 14 to 22 um, picofarads. 14 to 22 picofarads. So you can get a 30 pico, pico, picofarad capacitor, and that should cover that range for you. If it goes from zero to 30 picofarads, then you should be able to use that to tune to these stations. Right, the highest value of the capacitance we cover the lower band, and then the lower value of capacitance we co cover the higher band, and so that's it. That's how you do that. You don't have to ask people all the time to tell you the number of tons they used or the value of capacitor. If you have a piece of wire at home, any wire, any um, uh, enamel copper wire would do. Take this wire and then take. Um, any drill bit so we're gonna do a bigger one and then we're gonna call it a day today so let's just do with one with the bigger drill bit so I'm gonna measure this one here this is 0 0.251 without the wires so I'm gonna put wire on it and then we'll measure it again so just put put the uh, wire around and then just wound it one two three okay we're gonna stop at three now for now uh, there's no reason for that just for us to measure and we can add more if we need uh, let's measure the diameter the diameter is 0 0.310 0 0.310 so you're gonna go back to our formula and then just add it 0 0.310 0 0.310 and the number of turns we've made so far is one is three and then um, Let's just bring down this formula. Okay. And then the length, the length of this circuit, um, I don't know the length yet. I haven't calculated it. So let's just measure the length. So to measure the length, um, 0 0.103. 
0 0.103 so let's just do that um, 0 0.103 um, I'm putting this on the spreadsheet so right here 0 0.103 and then 0 0.31 then number of turns and that tells us the value of capacitance or the value of inductance we need um, we can take it as is we don't have to change anything if you want to use this these three tons we just copy this value here and then go here in this other formula and, and plug it in I remember it is in micro Henry so oh no so I needed to paste not copy um, yeah I copied instead of pasting so let's go copy it again copy and then we're just gonna paste the value paste value paste picture we need value only and then he, remember we have to add e minus 6 e minus 6 because it's a micro Henry and then we're gonna do the same here paste picture values only and then remember to add e minus 6 again e minus 6 so then that tells us that we need about 24 24 um, picofarads to 36 picofarads that's it 24 to 36 so if you have 36 picofarads capacitor then that's it you need um, 3 tons like we did here so with a bigger drill bit we just have fewer number of tons right fewer number of tons so so if you want to count this you can see we made three full tons i think it's going to be four because when you if you fold this together if you close it's going to be this three point something because let me just stretch it out and we can count it together So if you start from here and to this point, it's 1. From that point to that point is 2. From this point to that point is 3. So it's almost like 3.5 that we did. 3.5 tons that we did. So to, to be 3 exactly would mean that this coil would end right at the same area that it started, about the same spot. So you can now close it and measure the actual um, diameter. Oh, the length the actual L sorry we have to measure the actual L and now we are using three tons and again you see the gap between them it's the length of the magnetic circuit so we can actually increase that by just stretching it out so let's just call it um, what value are we seeing here uh, 0 0.101 101 0 0.101 so you're gonna go back and change the value we had here 0 0.10 Okay, it's 1, 101, not 103. And that will affect the inductance a lot of it. So let's just copy that value. And then go and plug it in into our, our formula again. Um, paste special value only. Don't forget to put E minus 6. Otherwise, it will screw up your calculation. And then here... I'm going to paste special again and then forget your e minus 6 e minus 6 let's see okay so that tells us we need 24 to 36 again same 24 to 36 um, picofarads 24 to 36 picofarads all right so I, I'm just moving one one day this um okay i have to show you what i was doing sorry about that so we did um we plugged in the values here uh the 0 0.01 it, it used to be 0. um this 0 0.03 and the value we got was 0 0.0891 but now we we measured it again exactly at three tons and we're getting 0 0.0899 we took that value plugged it in here and you know use the right units and we're getting about 0. Point, uh, sorry 24 picofarads to 36 picofarads if you move this decimal after 4 then this goes to minus 12 that's pico 
then same goes here 36 picofarads so you have a 36 picofarads capacitor you should be able to um do that so that's what we did here we have about 20 picofarads capacitor and our inductor you can see how it is stretched so you can build your own uh inductor you don't need anybody to tell you the value right if you know uh the range of, of the frequency you want to receive if you're in North America or in Africa is 88 to 108 if you're in in, in Europe especially in in Russia it's about 76 or there about so find out what the range is plug in the value use the formula we've shown you and then use that to calculate the values so the formula is here right so the F you know the value of your F and then uh, 2 and pi they are constants then you are making L and you're using the L to find your C or if you already have C you can calculate the value of L that you need and then you make the L right so this other formula here is what you're gonna use but again you have to solve it backwards uh, hopefully we didn't make a mistake but when you solve it are you going from um, uh, F is equal to 1 over 2 pi FC multiply both sides by 2 pi so that you can cross out this uh, 2 pi if I have 2 pi here they will cancel but then I have the 2 pi come over to the F side to so 2 pi here so that's how we got to this point right and then you you are removing the square root so when you remove the square root so you have to square everything when you square this side and you square this side this square will remove the square root and then that's how you got square over here and then this is inverse so when you do inverse of every side so one over everything one over everything this will inverse and become lc and then one over this right and then you just calculate for c you calculate for l so i think we're right with the formula so once you calculate you find out um what value of c you're looking for and we've done that in this spreadsheet and that's what we're using so it's doing it automatically for us um we plug in the formula here and then this is our pi and then if you also want to know the inductance and capacitance, capacitive reactance and inductive reactance, you can see they're the same value. We use the formula for that. That's the, you're going to give you the same value. For XC, um, the, the formula for, for capacitance, capacitive reactance is 1 over omega C. So capacitive reactance is 1 over omega C. Where omega is 2 pi, so it's actually 1 over... 2 pi omega is 2 pi f so this is 2 pi fc that's how you calculate the capacitive reactance and the inductive reactance xl is equal to uh, omega l which is 2 pi fl so we did all this just to 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 check and uh, that's what you see in here the values are the same but they're going to be opposite phases so they cancel out so if this is uh, plus 90, 49, this is going to be minus 49, and the value, effective value is zero. That is the point of resonance. All right, so that's what we did, and uh, you see this, the radio working. That's a circuit diagram. You can do that for transmitter and receiver. And um, in the future, we're going to show you walkie-talkie. We've built one already. We're going to demo, demo it later. Uh, we're going to show you the full functions. Actually, one, one component is still missing. Uh, the switch, you know, for a walkie-talkie, you need to push the talk. We need to put the switch here. Hopefully, the part we ordered will fit in. And then we have an inductor here, which is an optional component. But we'll see, we'll experiment and see how it works. So that's there for you. If you want to use an antenna for this, um, last week we said use about one meter or, or 87, uh, 87, uh, sorry, or 0 0.85. Uh, meters which is the actual measurement how we got that was you know that um, frequency or velocity is equals to two sorry I'm um, used to saying to you now velocity is equals to frequency times wavelength frequency times lambda velocity is state is the same for all electromagnetic waves so um, the lambda which is the wavelength is then lambda is velocity over frequency we know the velocity of light or velocity of electromagnetic waves is the same which is about 3 times 10 raised to power 8 meters per second and the frequency here is um, 
88 to 108 so let's do the lower band because that will cover everything so 88 megahertz 88 megahertz will be 0 0.88 times 10 raised to the power 8 we did it on purpose so we can get times 10 uh, on one side raised to the power 8 on one side so that your lambda is 3 over 0 0.88 if this is confusing a little bit just do it do it this way 3 times 10 raised to the power 8 actually is 2.99 or 2.97 times 10 raised to the power 8 uh, then divided by 88 times 10 raised to the power 6 when you do that this will still cancel this leaving 2 here so it will be 300 um, divided by 88 which is the same as this because if you move this twice you put two zeros right so um, So let's see what what values we get here. Three hundred divided by eighty-eight, and then that will be the the lambda itself, and then but we need a quarter of that. Um, so if we do the the math, hopefully we are correct. It will be three point four, around three point four one or thereabout. Let's just say three point four one meters, and then you want to divide this by four to get a quarter of that. So when you do that, the value you get is going to be around 0 0.85, 0 0.85. So the antenna length is a quarter, quarter wavelength. You can do quarter wavelength, you can do half wavelength, you can do the full wavelength. If you have, you can, you know, have this or this or this, right? So that will be, give you the best matching. So if you have three meters wire, but it will look somehow carrying three meters wire around, um, so uh, maybe divided by two um, will be still 1.7 meters wire. Uh, maybe not too much, but you know how it looks. But a quarter of it, less than a meter, uh, will serve as the antenna for this. And this is for the 88 megahertz. And then if you want to do for for 108 megahertz, it will be the same 300 divided by um, 108. So that would be about 2.7. Uh, is that correct so let's see uh, so let's just go and do it from here so 3 times 10 raised to the power 8 divided by 108 times 10 raised to the power 6 and this would be 2 300 over 108 yeah so that should be around 2.77 2.77 meters a quarter of that then will be um, around 0 0.69 0 0.69 right so that will be the quarter wavelength for for the um for the 108 megahertz so i think you should solve for the lower one because that wire will also cover for the the um the higher frequencies so that's that's how you do that pick a i would say go for this so for the lower in your region if your region if you're using 76 plug in 76 here if it's 50 plug in 50 whatever it is let's just assume that you're in a region where the the um fm station or any radio you're, you're working with start with 54 megahertz let's say 54 megahertz right so you just plug in 54 right there so that will give you about 5.55 uh, meters so if 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 we are using 54 megahertz 54 megahertz then it will still be 300 divided by 54 and then that will be 5.55 then we d when you divide that by 4 you get about 1.3 so that's still you know long a very lengthy wire 1.4 meters something like that so um that's how you calculate the antenna length and so that's it that's it pretty much. So that's our radio station right there. Our radio receiver. And the radio is very sensitive to touch or presence of other materials around it because of the inductance and strain inductances. So we're using this, this metal here to try to create a balance. But you can still notice some um, You can still notice some noise and some fluctuations in the signals.
All right, I'm sure you will remember this transmitter from a long time ago. This is another transmitter that, that we built, but you can actually just, yeah, you can see here the acoustic. Let's try it this way. You can hear the acoustic from this. Alright, so we build the transmitter and the receiver and they can work together. So, um, if you want to build your own walkie talkie, that is what it, it really means to have a transmitter and the receiver working together. Alright, the transmitter and the receiver works together, so if you build yours, you can just, um, so you have seen we have built a, a transmitter and we have built the receiver that works with it. So if you have them in, in combination, then that's your walkie talkie right there. Alright, we built an extended, we made an extended tutorial on the other channel, like a wall. Uh, you can go there and watch um, a little bit more but I think that's what we'll be signing out this is where we'll be signing out for today uh, the circuit again that we, we're gonna demo later this this transceiver as a full transceiver on this board we're gonna demo that later We're gonna just try to tune this one a little bit and see. Okay, this battery is probably out. That's why we're not able to get any meaningful signal from it. Let's try another battery and see. Let's try this battery and see if it works. Yeah. Yeah, this battery is better. So let's just tune it. Alright, so tuning this is a little bit uh, hard, so we have to change the batteries. But you can see that the, as we tune the, the variable capacitor, we can get into a place where we can pick the acoustic. Uh, I'm just gonna. Yeah. Alright. Okay, so we have shown this um, to be the case. So in the next, when we do the video for the walkie-talkie, we'll demonstrate this in full. All right, so that will be it for, for, for this today. All right, thanks for sticking around to the end. That will be it for us today. Please, if you have not subscribed, do so right now. And don't forget to like and share this video. Until we come your way again with more contents, Stay